Broadcasting live from our studio in Boston with presentations from prominent industry vendors, Solutions Review presents Data Demo Day, a virtual trade show for data management and analytics. I'm Doug Atkinson here at Solutions Review and we are back at Data Demo Day. Uh, and today we're looking at two solutions that solve deeper challenges organizations face when implementing data analytics and business intelligence systems. And specifically, we're going to dig into a couple of companies that are delivering next level data discovery and data replication solutions that power analytics tools with the best available data inputs in complex environments. Up next is HVR, a real-time data replication solution designed to move large volumes of data fast and efficiently in hybrid environments for real-time analytics. And the good news for our attendees is, is that HVR just recently announced a new multi-cloud release a few weeks ago, and you'll get an early look at that. Uh, joining us uh, live from HVR today is Joseph De Buzna, Global Vice President for Sales Engineering. Joe, thanks for being here. Hey Doug, good to be here. Appreciate it. Well, it's uh, it's it's a, it's an interesting time <laughs> currently to be uh, to be in business. We're all working in uh, in various ways. Certainly, uh, using a lot of of Zoom meetings. Uh, but I'm curious, with regard to HVR, what you're seeing uh, at the client level with regard to how people are approaching their uh, their integration challenges. Yeah, I, I hear you, Doug. Um, it's it's some of it's been happening already. I think what the real big difference right now is um, there's been an, an increased sense of urgency. You know, people are expediting their their move to the cloud, their their digital transformation. A lot of people like to call it. Um, you know, with everyone working from home and 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 kind of a lot of this online. You know, the the, the face the faces are, are are kind of going away, and and folks are realizing. You know, I, I can't really go into my data center. I, I can't really you know, do some things that I, I could still kind of hold on to before. I could kind of, uh, you know, hold back a little bit from from this cloud movement. And, and what we're seeing right now is just a, a seriously an acceleration into that into that whole cloud digital landscape. No doubt about it. I know you're uh, you're you're right in the in the front lines of of talking to folks who are are solving these problems every day. I'm curious how HVR differentiates itself uh, in a in a general way with uh, with other ETL solutions. Yeah, CDC for um, or CDC. Yeah, I mean we we work really well with with, with ETL ELT type solutions, um, but they, you know, when we partner with them and, and and we've got a great partner list in in that area, but it's it's the CDC part of that, the change data capture part, uh, and you know the way we differentiate ourselves from the ETL really is is that we get all the changes out of the databases. You know, ETL solutions, for example, have a little bit of issue with getting um, data out if there's not timestamps, so they're kind of taking full dumps out if they just want to get the latest changes. If something gets deleted, you know, they have to get it out twice and then do a delta on it. And and when we're doing the CDC part of this, we get everything and, and we can do the time series and we make it a lot easier for the ETL to, to pick this up downstream on, on maybe some more modern analytics platform. And, and HVR in particular, um, performance is in a word you know we we get into these systems that are extremely high volume you know we really start in the terabyte uh, database area and go well beyond that and and that's you know in, in data validation we get a little bit to the data trust side of things our, our areas and, and security and, and and the independence that that we have between multi-cloud we're seeing a lot of you know, cloud to cloud going on right now, on-prem to cloud for sure. Um, but now we're also seeing, you know, uh, you know, movement between the different clouds and, and there's even some regulations coming out that kind of help uh, some of the financial services go into this. But that that's really an area, you know, data trust, data validation, along with the performance, I'd say, just if you want a, a sound bite for it. Well, I know you have a demo uh, that you're going to share from your CTO, Mark Vanderweel. Um, We'll let you get at that, and then we're going to come back in about a, a half an hour with some uh, with some questions uh, that we've got from our, from our audience, uh, and then we'll wrap things up. Uh, so, please uh, take it from here. All right, Doug. Thanks. Hello, and welcome to this recorded presentation. 
In this presentation, we will discuss real-time replication of SAP data to Snowflake. This is part of the technology and practice sessions, and I will be showing you a live demo as part of this presentation, which is always very exciting because live demos have a tendency that they can go wrong. My name is Mark Vanderweel. I'm CTO at HVR, and I focus on everything technical as it relates to our real-time data replication capabilities. So quick introduction into the technology. With HVR, we replicate high volumes of data to and from a variety of sources and targets in heterogeneous environments, uh, dominantly for real-time reporting and analytics. The right-hand side of this slide uh, depicts the, the numerous technologies HVR supports, and you'll see a mixture of traditional transaction processing databases like Oracle, SQL Server, DB2, Postgres, et cetera, as well as analytical data platforms like Snowflake, of course, and then there's others, Teradata, Greenplum, et cetera, and then data lake platforms like AWS S3, um, GCS, ADLS, et cetera. Now, from HVR's perspective, we provide modular technology. We support a subset of these logos as sources, um, and all of these uh, platforms as destinations, and customers can mix and match sources and destinations as they like. For the real-time replication, we provide an end-to-end -end solution, which starts by data discovery on the source, creating tables on the destination using lossless data type mappings, then um, initial one-time load, aligned with ongoing CDC, change data capture and continuous integration, compare and repair capabilities, and all of that, of course, rounded off with the graphical user interface to control it, as well as monitoring capabilities and alerting. So um, let's talk about the technology and how we perform change data capture. So from HVR's perspective, we look at the different technologies that are out there and always look for the most efficient way to perform change data capture on the technology. And then we often end up using log-based change data capture. And why is that? Because it's ideal for large data volumes. Of course, um, CDC, change data capture, we only move changes after we've done the initial load. So from that perspective, we already minimize the bandwidth of, um, to get the required changes to keep the destination in sync. But then from a log-based perspective, the change data capture is asynchronous. When the transaction gets, gets processed and the commit happens, upon committing the change, the change is written to the transaction log and a separate process is watching the transaction log in order to parse out the information. So from that perspective, there is no impact on transactions and going back to large data volumes and critical production databases, that's exactly what we want and that's what customers appreciate about the HVR technology. And secondly, HVR is transactional. So that means as we maintain the transaction boundaries into the destination system, we can make sure that there's no data inconsistencies like unexpected situations such as um, order detail records without the order header or vice versa. These kinds of conditions won't happen uh, because we can maintain the transactional consistency coming out of the source delivering data into that destination. And then lastly, log-based change data capture, in contrast to like bulk extractions, can be performed in real time. Typically, customers configure the solution to watch the transaction log in real time and move changes into the destination as they happen. So as changes get committed, they get picked up, propagated, and delivered into the destination, enabling analyt analytics on the freshest possible data. Now, what does that look like for Snowflake? So into Snowflake, we've built optimizations. These are transparent to the end user in order to make sure that the Snowflake database on aggregate can uh, keep in sync with um, a multitude of sources. Like on the, on the left-hand side, you see the different source technologies HVR supports. And we work with customers who literally generate more than a terabyte 
of incremental changes on a single database and those changes need to flow into the destination. And in a database like Oracle or SQL Server, um, you'll see a lot of concurrent operations, lots of small transactions. And if you would run the exact same workload mix on a Snowflake database, arguably it's, it's just not built for that kind of a workload. So upon delivering into the target, HCR has built optimizations. These optimizations are around the use of staging and uh, HR supports both the internal and the explicit external staging areas on the, the different clouds, uh, Snowflake supports. And through that, we uh, load the data into the destination and then we use essentially micro batches to incrementally update the, the destination um, uh, tables in Snowflake so that we, again, from an aggregate perspective, we can manage the load on the system. Now, on the left-hand side, a couple of logos stand out here, SAP HANA and SAP ECC, because obviously for the purpose of this demonstration, we're going to focus on SAP. Now, SAP ECC is the dominantly deployed a version of the SAP ERP system. Um, it'll gradually be replaced by S4 HANA, but given the number of customers that are out there still running ECC, that's still a dominant platform that we see in our customer base. Uh, ECC can run on multiple different database types, including Oracle, SQL Server, DB2, and others, and actually also SAP HANA as well, and then the future version of the SAP applications, the S4 HANA, is only available on SAP HANA. We see a lot of customers with a mixture of these different databases, and HR supports both the applications running on ECC on any one of our supported database technologies, as well as the S4 HANA running on SAP HANA. So now if we think about replicating SAP data, Let's talk for a moment about some of the challenges that you might see from a customer perspective. So why would you even want to replicate SAP ERP data? And there's a few reasons listed here. So first of all, SAP, of course, contains valuable data. So you would want um, to include that data as you build an analytical environment and you're trying to uh, see what it takes to outperform the competition or to lower costs or to minimize risk for your organization. And because your organization invested in SAP, the organization essentially manages its primary business process by using SAP. So SAP absolutely contains valuable data that you want to include. Now the data is sitting there in SAP and of course you can use SAP tools and capabilities to, to look at the data, but it's it's kind of locked up in SAP. It's, um, the, the, it's, it's not in Snowflake, right, for one thing. And, and Snowflake is not part of the SAP ecosystem. And in order to get the data out of SAP into Snowflake, the, the SAP doesn't provide a good solution there uh, because the SAP solutions primarily focus on keeping uh, the, your data in the SAP ecosystem. And particularly in the case of Snowflake, you want to get it out of the SAP ecosystem. And then lastly, um, our experience is that SAP is rarely the only data source. It's more common that organizations have either other ERP systems or CRM systems, maybe homegrown systems, maybe industry-specific applications, IoT applications, social media, et cetera other data sources that also need to be part of the analytical solution. So with SAP not being the only one, you, you, you look to consolidate data from multiple sources into, um, into a platform such as Snowflake. Now, how does HVR support uh, the SAP ERP system? So first of all, on ECC, certainly the legacy ECC implementations, there's at a high level three different types of applications, transparent cluster and pool tables, and HR supports all of these different types of tables. And in the case of cluster and pool tables, that's important because those tables at the database level contain most of their data in an encoded format. So you'd have to decode it on the way into Snowflake because otherwise you can't use the data on the target side. Um, 
HR provides law-based CDC from HANA. That is a unique capability that we bring to market, and that gives you exactly that low-impact, high-performance, high-volume law-based CDC that um, that HR is known for. And then um, we provide integration with the SAP dictionary. So if you added custom tables, if you added columns to your SAP deployment, then we support capturing uh, out of those, uh, capturing the data out of those as well. And then lastly, and a lot of our customers truly appreciate this, is when HR captures changes and specifically as it relates to the cluster and pool tables, we're only decoding that data further downstream in the data replication flow. And we're not putting any extra load on the SAP data server um, or the database server or the SAP application servers. In fact, there's not even ABAP or BAPI, uh, some of SAP's proprietary languages involved in order to do that decoding. So customers appreciate that because SAP, of course, being the the core of the primary process for your organization is critical and its availability is critical, its performance is critical. So with all of that said, let's focus on a demonstration. And in this demonstration, we're going to take SAP data and delivering it to Snowflake in AWS. So what does the architecture look like that we're uh, going to demonstrate? So on the left-hand side, there's the source. This is an SAP uh, server. This is, in fact, SAP running on a SQL Server database. It's ECC, one of the recent versions of ECC. And then in line with HVR's best practice, we've deployed an agent on this uh, source database server. That agent will perform log-based capture for us. It will parse the logs already on that database. And then before the data gets sent on the wire, it is compressed, it is encrypted, and, and then it goes to, to the hub, which is the central control environment. Now, that hub lives physically on my desk here. And then from the hub, it'll get sent um, into AWS, into Snowflake. Now, again, in line with our best practices, we've installed an agent in AWS uh, on, in the same availability zone as where Snowflake lives, where our S3 bucket lives so that as we stage the data in S3 and deliver it into Snowflake, we get optimum throughput, we get optimum performance. So now for this demonstration, I thought we'll, we'll do a use case and I'll put myself in the shoes of an end user for a moment. So here I am, I'm a data analyst, I work uh, for an organization and we sell product in the United States. My focus, well, we, maybe we sell product worldwide, but my focus is the United States. So what I'm looking at is my sales dashboard here. So on this dashboard, I have a map of the United States. I can see where we generate most of the revenue, which is in the state of Washington, where we have other hotspots of generating revenue. And on the right-hand side, by material type, I can see what the popular products are so that I can keep an eye on the mix of products that we're selling to our customers across the United States. And then at the bottom of the screen, I have my rejected items. And the reason why, as an, uh, an employee for this, um, for this organization, these items are important to me is because um, as an employee, I need to make sure that if customers reject our items for whatever reason, once they've placed the sales order and still end up rejecting it, that I follow up as quickly as possible in order to see if we can somehow mitigate the situation so that it will not be a complete loss of revenue. Now, this dashboard is up to date. We're querying this directly out of Snowflake, but just to make sure that we're indeed completely in sync, I am refreshing this data source once more. So we're uh, reaching out to our Snowflake database to get the exact up-to-date information um, from this um, database. And then what we're going to do is process a change in our SAP system and then see what that means uh, from a dashboard perspective, right? So here we are, this is our up-to-date dashboard. So let me uh, move over and let me connect here to our SAP system. 
So here we go. Provide the login information. So um, I'm going to update an existing sales order. So I pull up the, um, the sales order initial screen. There's one particular order that I'm looking for because let's say, uh, so now I'm in the shoes of a different employee. This customer just um, called us Globex Inc. And they said that for this particular order, there's one um, item here, there's this uh, server value where they indicated that the competitor provided a better price. So they provide a better price. So I um, record this in our SAP system. I save the change um, to the SAP application. And there we go, right? So let me close SAP. And then let me go back to the other end user um, who is watching our Tableau dashboard. And now what we're going to do is make sure again that we're looking at the up-to-date data. So we're refreshing the screen here, reaching back out to Snowflake. And what we expect to see is that we now have an additional rejected item at the bottom of the screen here, um, um, the uh, server value that should get, get pulled up here shortly. And as a user for this organization, I should now follow up, and here we go, with uh, the, the customer Globex Inc. Um, to find out why they said, well, the competitor provides a better price, right? Like, and I can see here, this affects revenue in my most popular state. I can see here the material type is finished product, which is one of the more popular, but not in fact the most popular um, material type. So this is how this real-time uh, data replication scenario helps this organization mitigate loss of revenue. So now let's... Um, shift gears here and let's look at Snowflake. So how did we implement this in Snowflake, right? Because, well, we're replicating data out of SAP, right? So in Snowflake, we have this area with physical tables, and this is where we have our SAP tables. In fact, uh, we have the, um, here we go, right? We have uh, VBAC and VBAP, so sales header and sales, uh, sales detail, and you see here all these these columns that as an SAP DBA you might recognize, right? Like four or five character abbreviations, uh, arguably relatively difficult to understand. So in this, um, in this physical schema, we've, we've, we store, we replicate all the data coming out of the source. In fact, one thing we do here is we're using a soft delete capability. So we've introduced a couple of extra columns so that we know when a row got deleted for, for downstream processing that makes our downstream processing a lot easier. And then on top of this, um, on top of these physical SAP tables, we've then built some dimensions, right? So for example, here is a customer dimension where we get company, customer number, customer ID, et cetera. And if we preview the data for this, um, for this particular, um, uh, view, in this case, we could see the data, right? And, and the data here, this is uh, IDES demonstration data out of SAP. So these are, th this is an existing um, uh, data set um, coming out of SAP. And, and like we have customer here, we have materials, we have um, reason for rejection, and then we have our fact table, right? The, the sales order table, that has all this information. And then in Tableau, of course, we're pulling all this, this data together, right? Like, and if we look at the SQL for this, um, um, for this view, you can see here how we're taking the columns out of the uh, physical schema, how we're transforming uh, date, uh, data that SAP stores in a date field into an actual date value so that in Tableau we can make those computations a lot easier. And then you can see here that we're joining VBAC, VBAP, VBUC, and VBUP, right? So, so these are the SAP tables, the physical tables that we transform into a schema that is usable to us as an end user. And then again, we run Tableau against this. Now then going to the actual topic of the uh, the technology that performs the replication. So what does it look like in HVR, right? And at a high level, 
here is what it looks like. And this is a topology view. Now, in this topology view, we're actually only the, the replication flow that we're, that we're looking at is only this, this uh, SAP C system here at the bottom uh, left, the SAP cloud system going into Snowflake. Right? That is the replication flow that we showed. Now, I introduced a secondary flow in, uh, in, in this replication, and the reason for that you'll see in a minute when we look at the actual statistics for this. But then on this particular environment, I can go in and actually interact with this chart. If I get this right, then I should be able to click on this uh, line to actually get some up-to-date information. But as it goes with uh, some of these live demos, um, and there we go, it complains about um, not being refreshed here. So let me just try that again. Right, so here we go. So trying to click on that line, but still it doesn't respond. So let's just move over to the statistical view here where you'll see um, why I decided to um, to incorporate another channel, and it looks like it's not responsive. So let me just pull up the topology again, and hopefully this time it does give me the opportunity here to interact with the chart and show you this um, this live latency information. Right, so it gives me exactly what I'm looking for, and then looking at the statistical view, we can see um, like how the the, um, the replication flow, right? So if we look at the data by minute, and then we're going to gradually zoom in to the recent past, we can see here how the replication data has been flowing across, uh, the, the, across between source and destination. We can also look at like how did the, um, the latency involve, right? So here at the start of it, we see a couple of minutes, but then uh, replication latency was going down and then if we, um, if we look specifically for our SAP um, to Snowflake channel that you could see here, right, like a few minutes ago as part of this recording, uh, I actually, I replicated a row in VBAC, VBAP, VBUC, and VBUP, and that made it all the way into Snowflake so that in Tableau, when we refreshed our view, uh, we could get the up-to-date information, right? Now, in this uh, this Dashboard gives us all sorts of information, so we can look at the number of transactions that we see flowing through the system. And of course, there's not a lot here. Then if I go back to all channels and we look at the number of transactions, we see there's actually been a lot more activity, right? So on a real world system, this gives us lots of insights into data flowing between sources and destinations. Now I quickly showed you the uh, HVR dashboard here. Right, so here we can see uh, complete up-to-date information of how things are flowing, right? Like into S3, we're, we're only sending the data once a minute. And so in between integration cycles, we, uh, we keep our state uh, pending. And then, um, so if we, if we look at the definition of our replication, we could see all these tables that we've included out of our SAP system. Right, and here is an example of one of these monster tables, right? Accounting documents, no, th sorry, this is not accounting documents. BSEC is accounting documents, right? So this is a table um, that in many SAP systems is one of the biggest tables, has a, a lot of columns, is about 300 columns. And um, this data is often quite central to what your organization does. So HVR can replicate this data. As said, for some of the older ECC systems, some of the data would be stored in cluster and pool tables, and this BSEC table is one of the notorious ones that is a cluster table, which is, again, often one of the biggest uh, tables in the system. So um, with HVR, we're replicating this data out of SQL Server into Snowflake, and then I highlighted before that we provide end-to-end -end replication capabilities, right? So we have the ability to do a one-time load, which is called the, the refresh, where we select source, destination, select what tables we want to replicate, and then we have the ability for bulk, for parallelism, and then we also have the ability for larger tables that we can, um, we can slice the table. Now, in this case, I haven't selected any table, but we can subdivide a large table into smaller portions. And then also, we provide a compare function, 
right? So at any point in time, I can go in and validate if the current state on the source matches the current state on the destination. So I can keep an eye on the data quality and make sure that my analytical scenarios that they do run on accurate data. And this is a capability that also our customers um, uh, enjoy. This works on all different types of tables, including the cluster and pool tables. And like if I look at um, like row wise comparison here, of course, we want to do uh, in include in flight changes in our consideration whether tables are in sync or out of sync. So in a nutshell, that is the HR uh, replication function here. So if I go back to the slideshow and quickly summarize what we've looked at and what we've seen from an SAP into Snowflake data replication perspective, high volume real-time data replication. So what HR provides here is a co comprehensive and efficient solution. Um, this is software you install and run in, in your environment. Streamlined solution, less than 100 megabytes to download, and that includes all of these functions that we've highlighted, right? So that includes initial load, that includes DDL replication on, um, on most of the, the, the platforms that we support as a source with replication into all supported destinations. The lossless um, data type mapping that I mentioned, the initial load capability or the one-time load, the refresh that I quickly highlighted that is um, aligned with the ongoing change data capture and continuous integration. Log-based CDC, we looked at the reasons for doing that, efficiencies, high volumes, very important considerations, the fact that there is limited, if any, impact on your, um, on your source database transactions, validation capabilities, and then also repair as part of that, should for whatever reason systems get out of sync, there is a repair function then as well. And then lastly, all of that rounded out with a monitoring capability um, to uh, watch data flows, uh, see some of the statistics of the data movements, and then um, uh, insights into how the replication flowed. So all of that is available as a one-box solution. We recommend the use of agents, so we support operating systems that are commonly used across data centers and, of course, in the cloud, because the cloud is absolutely the dominant destination for us these days, um, and Snowflake being one of the most, if not the most popular data platform as a destination for analytics these days. So I hope this was insightful to everybody. So I thank you for attending this session and I hope you have a great rest of the show and hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Uh, comprehensive and efficient. Uh, I would say that was uh, not only the uh, the theme for that demo, but also I think uh, Hello, it's welcome. it's a good theme for for some questions with Joe. Uh, Joe, are you are you uh, are you still with us? I am. Hey, Doug. <laughs> Excellent. Um, well, uh, so certainly data integration is has been evolving in a in a major way uh, over the past decade, uh, and what we just saw was pretty comprehensive um, to just we have a couple of questions just to follow up with regard to the SAP demo but then I also want to get into a few more questions around around how to implement and uh, and and get started and so forth um, so with regard to the SAP implementation does HVR does the HVR extraction from SAP use a B a P code yeah Bob code um, it, it, that's a common question. I'm not surprised it, it popped up here. Uh, the answer is no. Uh, HVR is very hands off. It, it, it follows the, the kind of the mantra, thou shalt do no impact to the source system or the application servers. So everything's been reverse engineered, just like the transaction logs in the database have been reverse engineered. So is the, the SAP data. So we do this all in line, in the, in the pipeline, the channels we call them. And it, it, it just happens in the flow. And, and with that, we, we don't tax the systems and we get tremendous performance increases too. And it just simplifies the whole installation. The, the whole stack is, is a lot simpler set up too. So you're saying the HVR uh, solution doesn't put uh, load on the SAP application servers? 
It does not. It, it puts none in there. We're not competing with connections uh, with the application users itself. We do it all all in line ourselves. All, all the and data. So, oh, go ahead. No, I say some some ways that that folks who are in the SAP world they 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 say this you know this is how you get the data out and then if you want to because SAP has some very coded data and and there's some good reasons they did it back a long 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 time ago uh, but now those things make it difficult to get out and you kind of have to use the SAP ecosystem to get the data out HVR has done all the heavy lifting for you and then just streams of stuff in real time and and we can move just huge volumes this way. And so do you support Snowflake on other cloud platforms? Uh, yeah, Snowflake is, this past year they came out with Google and they start off with AWS and there was Azure in between there. And HVR has just been right there as soon as they released on the new platform. Uh, we support them on all the platforms and we do the internal staging and the external staging for the folks who are familiar with Snowflake. Uh, and what sources are you seeing being fed into Snowflake? Uh, you know, one of the reasons for today is, is SAP is, is, is a massively popular platform into going into Snowflake, this idea of, of being unlocked your data and querying it out there. Uh, that's been hugely popular. And, you know, we see a lot of Oracle and SQL Server and some DB2 coming out of there. Uh, but we're seeing everything really go into Snowflake now. We're, we're seeing, you know, out of Oracle Cloud pieces coming into there. We're, we're, we're seeing, you know, a lot of on-prem other cloud sources all feeding into Snowflake. So, I mean, for us, it's really databases and data types. Uh, so, you know, but it's a lot of, you know, kind of the traditional systems that we've, we've seen in the past, which still runs a lot of the lifeblood today, going to Snowflake, kind of hooking in sometimes your legacy systems into like a modern an analytic systems in the cloud. We, we see a lot of that. So I'm, so I'm curious to take a little bit of a step back. The uh, getting started with HVR. So, where are you seeing, um, you know, particularly maybe in the past in the past few months, where where are you seeing the traction uh, in the market for uh, for a CDC solution like this? Um, a lot of places. I mean, every, everyone's going more real time. It, it, it's been happening for a while. I think it's getting more expedited expedited now, and it's really for the analytics side of things. Um, it's not so much disaster recovery and all that. It's you know that that that's been solved a while back. It's it's taking ad advantage of the new elasticity of the cloud and then the new platforms that that Snowflake does a very good job with. But you know there's BigQuery and and, and there's it's Kafka still is, is is a big deal and and there's a lot of these systems out there that are really doing well in the cloud and folks want to take advantage of that, but they don't want to move their entire ecosystems yet. We do have some customers that are moving the entire ecosystems piece by piece out there and going in the microservices and monolithic and, and we help with that too. But you know, the, the first easy jump is we need some modern analytics. Let's do it in the cloud. Let's hook up our old systems and, and feed the cloud. And, and that's where we're seeing a, a lot of attraction. And you know, these are systems that have been around for a while and they've got terabytes upon terabytes of data. And so with regard to um, within the organization where, where you have, um, where you begin this conversation, I mean, wh whereabouts is it best for, uh, for, for you to, to, to engage with folks? Uh, and where, where do you find these types of solutions being, being uh, considered and then ultimately implemented? Okay, well, I'll avoid the common answer for the first part, the sooner the better, but um, <laughs> we're, we're seeing people who, uh, you know, are planning things, but now they're, they have an immediate need. They, they have, you know, they're like, hey, we're, we're doing this and we need to figure out how to get there as fast as possible. So analytics, as I mentioned, is, is a big one and, and, and moving up into the cloud is another one. We help with the migrations, but we, we tend to do a lot of the, keep, keep the data flowing even after, after that. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll have somebody who just, you know, at the DBA level coming, we'll have an architect coming, we'll have uh, CIOs and, and CTOs come and, and look for us. And more and more now we're, we're seeing partners who are, you know, tasked with, with taking these on, you know, folks who might not have known who HVR was a few years ago in, you know, large and small boutiques and, 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 and whatnot. And they just see the success that we've had at other places and they say, hey, we want to, you know, replicate that success over here. Um, as well. So that, that's kind of where we're engaging. And then the areas that we're seeing 
it spans, you know, we're kind of, you know, HVR is independent, you know, cloud independent. It's also very much independent from the vertical. We're seeing, you know, an uptick in financials right now. Financials are, are really starting to move to the cloud finally. They're a little bit later, but, you know, we're, we're seeing a lot in manufacturing. We're seeing a lot in logistics, um, telecom. So we're, we're seeing in, in a lot of these places, it's in, it's, um, it's folks who are, you know, trying to do more with less. They need to get more out of their data. They need to take advantage of these modern analytic systems and get that data in there quickly. They want to get a competitive advantage as the com competition is getting pretty, pretty tough these days. And then those who kind of gotten that part, the next part of the equation is like, let's generate new revenue streams. How do we use this to, to, to kind of package this and sell this out? And then we can now, we have this, can we create new opportunities? So it, 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 what we're seeing at Solutions Review is there, there are a lot, of, a lot of very easy ways for folks to test and trial some fairly complex solutions. Um, I'm curious about uh, you know, how people get started with, with HVR. Is there, is there a trial, a test, uh, some proof of concept uh, that you would recommend or that, that's easy for them to engage with? Yeah, I mean, we have a number of ways to, to engage. I mean, you go to our website right now, you can go do a test drive. You know, you, you get it for three hours and you can go through a little lab and you, you get the concepts on there. And we have a lot of videos and things that'll walk you through it. Um, you know, we, we have, we're in the marketplaces and, and all that. So you, you can grab, you know, a, an, an AMI image and AWS speak, for example. Um, and then we'll also help, help you out. We'll, we'll walk you through it. We have partners. Um, and and we'll, we'll help set it up. It's super simple setup. I mean, like as Mark was mentioning, it's less than 100 megabyte download. It's not a SaaS offering. It is a download, but it's a very small download. Unzip sets that whole thing up. That that's that that one little file supports everything we support. It would be Oracle 9, 10, 11, 12, 18. It'll support S3, it'll support Hadoop, it'll support Snowflake, it'll snow Kafka. You know, it's all packaged in that one thing. It does the initial loads and everything. So it's quickly uh, easy to help set up. And a lot of people more now want to see it in their environments. And, and that's where we or a partner can come in and, and, and help you set that up and, and do, you know, like, okay, show, show me the 500 gigabyte table that you can move over here. I want to see it. And, you know, we'll, we'll kind of show them how some best practices and lessons learned, some things they might be bumping into that, that we've seen with many other customers as well. So before we let you go, I'm curious, um... Again, you engage with lots of folks, uh, and you've you've provided a lot of guidance, um, given everything that's happening. But but actually, devoid of all that's happening, just in general, what kind of what what pieces of advice would you offer to somebody who's who's considering uh, moving to a, a more a more real time solution like this? Yeah, and I mean, just taking HVR out of the picture and just talking generally what we've seen. Um, you know, there, there's been some systems that need to go real time. Some systems can be ETL. Uh, and what we've seen is, is when we're pulling all these into a central location, uh, a lot of folks, uh, they can't really deal with their data coming at different times. That's one thing. It's like, oh, I've got this one here. I thought it was real time, but it's nightly. And, it, and it, so everything kind of needs to be down to the lowest common denominator. Like everybody needs to be real time is, is what we're seeing because it's just easier for everyone just to run under the assumption. Is this data all up to date? Great, because I don't want to have to merge yesterday's data with this latest up to the second data. So that's one interesting thing I've, I've seen kind of pop out in the last couple of years. Um, another one is planning, planning, planning. I know a lot of folks are, are, are wanting to go fast, but um, we see interesting things when you're going into these new analytics environments, uh, square pegs, round holes with, with your data. You know, you lose a time zone, you you have some rounding, you have some funny character set encoding stuff and all, all these geeky things that the folks in the trenches have to deal with. And it can be a time sink if you don't kind of suss that out uh, ahead of time. So um, the testing part of it, uh, it can be done quickly, uh, but it needs to to be done so some of those folks can can handle these um, these data, but really data quality issues you know you had octopi on here earlier and and, the, and they do some interesting things with that and it's um you know don't overlook that um so it's that balance between how fast can we go how fast do we not go and 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 then always you know always test too you know um it's always always best to try to to, to, to test two things because just by the comparative nature of of, of it you're, you're going to learn a lot by looking at something two different ways 
Yeah, I think that I think that advice is actually uh, spot on. The idea of you know going fast but not too fast, and and really thinking it through and and taking the time, particularly with the complexity these days and uh, and the challenges with getting it wrong. If you have the wrong inputs, uh, you're certainly not going to get the right analytics. Uh, so, excellent job. Uh, we very much appreciate HVR participating in this demo day. Uh, we're going to take this recording and uh, we're going to put it up on demand on our site. Uh, certainly anybody uh, who wants to review it, uh, who's watching now, we certainly would make it available to them, but also everybody who uh, might not have been able to make the actual uh, broadcast today and, and, and everybody that we have who are coming to all of our suite of data sites from BI and data integration to data management as well. Uh, we're going to make that available uh, over the next year. Um, and so best of luck to you, best of luck to HVR. Um, certainly, uh, I think things will be, um, be interesting as we move through the rest of the year. Uh, and I think 2021 is going to be uh, booming. So, uh, so have fun with all of that. All right. Thanks, Doug. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Thanks very much.